So I'm super excited to go ahead and get started with this series. So this is the first entry in this modern internet series. The first thing we're gonna do is establish our hub, which is the critical piece to get things started. Then we're gonna upload our custom logo and actually customize the theme so we're matching everything correctly. And then we're gonna play around with the layouts. All right, let's do it. <laughs> Okay, so let's go ahead and establish our hub network. Let's custom brand our site and then let's play around with the layout of our home page to prime us and get us ready for the future videos. Okay, so here I have the demo three site that we created in the previous video. The first one we want to do is establish the hub. Now to do that, I'm gonna show you two ways to do that. Now before prepping for this video, I saw that oh now in the SharePoint admin, the, the modern admin, you can actually establish the hub and all the other good stuff right there in the UI. You don't need the PowerShell script anymore. But just in case your tenant does not have that capability, let's walk through those steps. Now the first thing you want to do is establish a session to PowerShell. And I use the Windows PowerShell ISC. And you want to make sure you're running this in admin mode. Once you have that established, you want to make sure you get in the latest module for SharePoint Online and PowerShell. And you can do that by executing this command here. Now, don't worry. This cheat sheet, I'll leave a link to this notepad in the description below. Now, you notice that when I ran that module, I put the force option on there. And that's because I already had it installed. And with the force option, just like everything else, Microsoft is always updating these different tools as well. Um, you want to get the latest and greatest. And that force switch allows you to do that. Now, once I have that, let me just go ahead and grab the URL to my site and I want to now do a connect to my services and you want to connect to your tenant which is going to establish like a session uh, PowerShell session with your tenant now I just uh, established that without any credentials and it's going to prompt me to log in so I'm just logging in with my normal Office 365 Chris. Okay, so now I have an session established with my tenant. The next thing I want to do is to actually register that demo three site. Here's the URL for demo three as a hub. And I would do that with this command here. And the first thing it does, once you put that in, uh, the URL and all this other good stuff, and this is going to be the URL to that site collection, not your SharePoint admin site. And it's going to ask me for principles. I can easily do this in the UI, so I just hit enter there, and now my site is established as a HUD. And if I go to the demo 3, hit refresh, you would notice that now I have this extra layer that sits on top. This is going to be my global navigation for the hub. And now this is going to be a local navigation for this particular site collection. Again, demo three is the intro point or the main site for the hub. And the main site for the hub, you get different options. And the hub settings is one of those options. Create a site within this hub is another option. So let's go ahead and do that. So if I click create site, this is the same it's the same options the same dialogue as you would if you create any other modern site so let me just do this human resources and this is going to create a human resources and going to automatically associate that to my intranet hub and you can see that here because this global navigation is carried over and i don't have that create site option if i go into the gear icon i do not see a hub site settings option because Again, those options are only available to the main entry site. So I'm going to copy this URL to human resources. Let's just add this to the global navigation. And let's just call it human resources. And this is just going to give us a sample to see uh, certain features and capabilities that you get with the hub. All right, so now that's established. If I bounce there, everything still looks good. And we're ready to rock and roll. So that's the PowerShell way of establishing the hub for your particular site. In our case, the modern intranet that we're building. Now, another way you can do that, if you go to the SharePoint admin, and you have to be in the modern UI for this, let me just hit a refresh here. Let me search on demo. And this is going to bring up that demo for site. If I select that, you notice that you have the, this hub command here in the ribbon. 
and you can click on that drop down and for this site because it's already a, uh, it is established as the hub I get the option to unregister that so I don't need a PowerShell to deregister this site as the hub now another cup uh, piece that we have here associate you know similar to hubs is that I can if I select a site that's not the hub but it's associated to a hub network that like this human resource site is associated to the demo 3 hub if I click on this option I can change the hub association so here I can easily select um, a different hub to throw that site in if I select a site that's not associated to the hub if I go to here I can either register it as a hub without using PowerShell so we don't have to do those steps that you just saw me do or I can associate it to a hub that already exists so right here in the SharePoint admin now they have that command option for the hub that you don't need PowerShell which is really slick okay hubs established we have a sample site associated to the hub now let's talk about branding now the first thing I want to do is establish a logo for my hub network again anything that I do on this top line is going to be on every site within this hub now most logos uh, if I go on the hub settings and I update this most logos are going to have some form of wording with it because uh, and, and we run into this a lot with different clients when they're establishing their hubs is that the best thing to do is to use a logo that doesn't have the company's name in it or also you see a lot of redundancy uh, starting to bake in so you have the company name here in the logo then you got the company name here for the hub then you got the company name here for the main landing page for the the, the site or the intranet so all of these you, you kind of have to come up with a strategy to where this one scenario doesn't seem too redundant and it's like okay which one of these are is which even though they mean different things because of the way it's established now the next thing we want to do is go ahead and set up our branding for our main page so you can come here and add a logo for this main site and we're going to use the red Tesla logo background uh, that's going to be for the main landing page but you can also come here for human resources and establish a site information establish a logo for human resources and this is probably not the best logo for HR there's a logo for the site there's a logo for the hub and obviously we can do a logo for our main landing page all right so now that we have the logo let's get our color scheme uh, for this logo or for a brand and to do that you just do change the look on the main site collection for the hub and any changes we make here is going to propagate down to other site collections associated to the hub even if we make this change now and we don't have all of our sites associated to the hub as soon as you add that site it's going to take on this branding it's going to take on the global navigation it's going to take on the custom nav that you create in the footer so all that stitching and all that uh, propagation is all baked in which is really nice all right so now if I change the look here I have my red established and if I scroll down you notice that my accent colors are taking on that new red my footer is taking on that new red uh, one of the things I do want to add let's just go ahead and add in the logo to our footer so if I click upload here select the footer hit apply and now the off red really starts to rear you know becomes that more obvious and now this kind of looks bootleg a little bit so what we want to do is the next step is let's go ahead and establish the right color red for our brand and to do that what we need to do is the first we need to get the red the hex color for this red and if I look at my cheat sheet here there's a site that I found just pop this site URL here and what this is going to be I thought an online option would be good for us to kind of work together obviously I can do this in many different image editing programs like Photoshop or you know something along those lines but I think online is easy because you can follow right along and there's no assumption that you have a certain editing program baked in so now I have this up uh, image uploaded I just select the red that I want this is going to give me the hex value for that red let me just say this off here um, and I'm gonna say this off in a different notepad because I'm gonna have to start building this up uh, as we go in and customize this so now that I have the hex color the next step is to go to the online theme generator 
which is really cool and a lot simpler than what we're used to on the classic side. If you ever try to customize a theme in a classic SharePoint, you have a lot of war wounds and scars from that process. Here, they Microsoft got it really, really simple, and I think they nailed it. I think they really got it right this time. So we just take that hex color that we got from our image, come here to our, this is our, actually an Office UI fabric theme generator because the modern SharePoint uses Office UI fabric and React. This is all kind of work together. It's a multi-purpose, multi-use theme generated for React in general. And here we're just going to drop in our hex color. And if you scroll down, they have all these different buckets where in SharePoint Classic, we had to do this manually, but all these different boxes, buckets where they take that one hex color and they generate the different shades based off that one color so where we don't have to specify that. Now, that's really cool. That's really slick and it's super easy and let's take advantage of it. So now... Our theme is established because any once you drop that in, all your different shades are right here in this JSON file. If you pick on the PowerShell, this is going to be your JSON document for that. So let me just select that, copy it, go to Notepad, paste this off. And now what I want to do is establish the PowerShell needed to create a new theme with that color. So the first thing you have to do if I'm looking at the cheat sheet is that you want to establish that JSON and save that to a local variable. And I'm going to do that now. So let me just get that local variable. Oh, I don't need those extra characters. All right. And once you have your local variable established, then you want to run this command. And when you run this command, there's a couple things you want to pay attention to. The identity is going to be the name of your theme as it's represented in your tenant. And I say tenant because this is not what we're doing we're not customizing the theme just for a site collection we're not customizing the theme just for a hub network we're actually customizing the theme for the company so if someone else comes behind us within the organization and create another network or hub for sales department or for the client portal whatever portal they need to establish this theme will be available to them for another user or site collection uh, user or user an organization if they create a site collection this thing will be available to them so we want to make it meaningful for the organization and if you can create more than one of these guys so you want to be careful of the naming to where you're not naming everything Tesla I'm not sure if it allow you to do that or not but um, you know just be unique what you're naming as well all right so here is where you establish the Tesla red in our scenario and then also this local variable that we created for PowerShell, you want to reference that local variable here. All right, let's go ahead and drop this in the PowerShell command and get this loaded up. So first thing I do is set the variable. That, that didn't make any changes at all to our tenant. We just set a local variable. This line here is the one that does all the magic. And paste that in, hit enter. We didn't get an error, so we assume everything is good. So let's just verify. So we go to our demo three site hit refresh so that way we can see the latest and greatest go back to our process change the look look under themes and here we go there's our Tesla red and you see how uh, they separate the SharePoint themes that are out of the box that we selected from before from versus our cut company themes. so anything that we create as a company will be established under that header there which is very convenient and it's easy to identify all right so now we got that all saved, check our footer, and there our red is spot on because our logo is just blending in, just beautiful. All right, so now we have our main page, and the last thing we want to do is set up our layout for our main page. Now, the, the problem that we run into, this, this default theme or this modern site is set up to use, it's still using, it looks like, the V1 you know, we talked about the V1, V2, or the modern evolution. Uh, V1, where in V1, there was only one page layout. You only had one option. You had one column. So any web part that you use, you have to drop it in that one column. Now, we're progressed up to where we can customize these layouts to where we can have more than one column. So what I want to do is go ahead and establish a layout for this main section. These are all called sections. We're going to use this right third, this one third right which is going to give us enough real estate to not only have our hero graphic, which is what that web part was before, but now we can add something in like quick links. So let's just go ahead and drop quick links here. 
uh, we're not going to worry about the styling there and the configuration for that as of right now. But we do want to change our background color because remember when I talked about in the previous video, the SharePoint design or the SharePoint design lookbook where they have the catalog of different designs. One of the things that they do uh, pretty frequently, and this is something that I noticed, is that they change these section colors within the page to kind of help break up the different sections or the type of content. And it really added a nice look to that. So we're going to take advantage of that as well. So I kind of lost my carousel. That's scaring me. So I'm going to save the draft and I'm going to hit refresh on the browser. Okay, everything's popping back now. And that's the thing. Like if things start disappearing or you're making changes and you get like this blank screen, save that draft and refresh because that's just an indicator that you don't want to keep adding customizations or changes just to find out that you finished the page and you click save you get an error and all your information is not there it's not good at all all right so for the next section let's go ahead and establish a section for this one let's just split up the news and events so let's just put news here on the left let's put events here on the right and for this other section let's go ahead and split this to a three column uh, we're going to do documents there's another links web part here that we got for default by default uh, let's go ahead and establish a site and really for this row here when I'm thinking what we do we do recent documents for the current user or use or their documents or documents that they modify what have you a uh, site that they visit as the current user and maybe some featured links here so let's just name rename this to featured links or things you should know or whatever you want to call it right so for our sites uh, very basic configuration for right now let's go with the compact view uh, for our documents we have to we have to reconfigure this document web part to bring in all the documents right so all sites even outside of our network and that's that's when these sources really become very cool because you can say oh only sites for within this hub or you can say all sites which I don't know if this we have to look into this. I don't know if this is going to include their OneDrive or not. Well, you can say all sites and uh, documents, which is fine, any format type. And then we use our filter options to bring in things, the home things in for the current user. So let's say recently changed. Um, no. Uh, created by current user. And then I'm putting, and I think this is an OR filter modified by current user all right and then the most recent so anything that they edited or created as the you know as the current user is going to be easily identified and conveniently located here and we're going to do we're going to do cards or we're going to do lists let's do cards all right it looks okay all right and that's it for now i mean this stuff is so easy to change that let's just guess for right now um actually in your process for this tutorial is it's all guessing but in the real process we we'll actually spend a lot of time at the planning and design phase because creating this stuff as you will see is very easy to do and it's pretty straightforward so spend a, that you know now you have time to do a real well thought out strategy or well thought out plan or prep with creating a download folder with all the images you're going to use all the logos and all this other good stuff let's just go ahead and do the prep work to where we go to design these pages we're not trying to do many different assets at the same time and really focus on creating nice compelling and uh, user story driven type pages all right so now let's go to this um, I see something here with the sites I want to do Frequent sites for the current user versus the sites in the hub. I noticed that I only had one site, uh, so this is going to open it up to all sites, right? We really want to make this page convenient. This is this is probably way too many to display for the documents piece, so let's trim this down to let's say the top five. That cart layout really takes up a lot of real estate, doesn't it? Or maybe we just do lists. How's that? Yeah, let's do lists and then maybe eight. All right, so that's cool. We're just trying to balance out the pages from from a height perspective. All right, so now let's drop this section here to a gray, right? So that same gray there. So we want to alternate that gray a little bit. And then for the comment section, we don't need that. We don't need comments on the main home page. And then for this bottom 
uh, well let's just put a image gallery uh, image gallery there and we should be good to go all right so it's going to look ghostly initially we probably have to do some different layouts here for news and events but we're not going to worry about that now um, for the most part I think this is really starting to shape up and we added zero content we establish our brand we establish our hub network so we're primed for future videos and we got a, a nice little layout to really kind of segment and, and, and display a lot more information sooner than later you know versus all this scrolling uh, to consume information and then we got a little personalization in there which hopefully by the end of the series we have the new audience targeting capability uh, baked in and we can really personalize uh, these features and capabilities and talk about some strategies or some solutions on how do you put the right content in front of the right people without replicating so many different sites like creating a lot of noise right for the very large organizations that's key audience targeting is actually a must because there's so much information flowing that you want to have the right information for the right people the new modern audience targeting system is going to be a, a much better experience than what we have for classic that's it for this video <laughs>